Right, hi guys. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, Nine Princes in Amber by Roger Zelazny, which uh, was published in like 1972. And as far as I can work out, it is the first book in a five part series called The Chronicles of Amber, which is like a classic fantasy series. Um, or I guess like, uh, or at least in this one, you could even call it uh, like an urban fantasy because it kind of starts off in our world and then introduces a whole bunch of fantasy elements. Now, before I uh, get into like a synopsis or my thoughts or anything, I've got to read you the blurb because the blurb is just fantastic. Right, so here we go. All other worlds are in darkness. Only one is real. Amber. The perfect realm. Now hideous and alien forces rise up against its rulers. Only one can save Amber. Corwin, the uncrowned prince. Long exiled to the shadow earth, Corwin has returned to seize his throne. Yet his bloody path is blocked and guarded by eerie structures beyond imagining. Dot, dot, dot. Impossible realities forged by demonic assassins dot 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 and staggering horrors to challenge the might of Corwin's superhuman fury how over the top is that it's brilliant I love it now this book is written in the uh, first person point of view from the perspective of the main protagonist who um, I guess spoiler alert for this 50 year old book who is Corwin Although the opening scene is like him waking up in hospital, drugged up to the eyeballs and suffering from amnesia. He's like a really resourceful guy and he manages to track down his sister. Although it uh, quickly becomes apparent that there's something weird going on and something something weird about him and about his situation. As it turns out, uh, he's uh, an exiled prince from a parallel dimension with all kinds of crazy powers and like eight fratricidal brothers who have equally crazy superhuman abilities and alien armies and all want to claim the throne of like the ultimate parallel dimension, uh, a place called Amber. So yeah, that's like the basic premise of the I, I say basic that's the premise of the book and yeah if you're watching this I guess you want to know if I think it's any good uh, so yeah I guess um, I thought this novel started off uh, really strong but then about a third or a half of the way through it just really started to tail off uh, to the extent that I'm probably well I'm, I'm not going to carry on with it anytime soon I may pick it up uh, again in the future if I I've only got the first book in the series if I see the other one around anywhere I might grab it but I'm not going to go out searching for it now the reason I read this book in the first place is because I recently read the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hub and I absolutely love that I did reviews on it so you can check them out if you want but I, I especially enjoyed the first person narration which I, I mean, I'd not read much like that in the fantasy genre, so I was looking for similar stuff, and this fit the bill. And obviously one of the key things about a first-person narrative is the main character, and I thought that the, the the main character in this is Corwin, and he started off, yeah, really well, really nicely written. At the beginning of the book, he's a, an amnesiac, but he's a really resourceful guy, he's got a load of skills, all this intuition, and without knowing why particularly and that was a, a really interesting mystery for him to work through as a character he's also got i think a really strong voice as a character and a pretty good sense of humor as well also i think um as a writer zelazny is really imaginative and there's a bunch of great concepts that he introduces throughout the novel now there's loads of like parallel dimension type stuff in it but uh what Zelazny does that I've not seen before is he's, he's got Amber which is the the real world the the one perfect you know dimension and then all of the other dimensions of which there are from what I can work out there are basically infinite other dimensions um, all of them are just like a shadow of Amber but all of the nine princes of Amber as the you know the title says 
all of them can like manipulate these other dimensions. They're called like shadow realms, and all of them can manipulate the manipulate them in various ways. So that was really interesting. You know, there's other concepts as well. Like there's this the they've got these decks of cards called trumps. And uh, they can use them to like communicate over long distances or travel, you know, over distances and dimensions or even like attack each other from sort of far away. And there's other stuff as well. Like um, there was oh, there's this one uh, in in Amber itself, the, the realm of Amber. There's a there's this like underwater city, which is literally a reflection of amber which i thought was like just a really original concept so i really like that and zelazny's prose as well uh, his prose and his dialogue well he, his descriptive prose at least um, and his dialogue was really punchy and to the point uh, and i really liked that so yeah you know there's a lot of good stuff in there um but by the end of the book i wasn't really enjoying it and um, one of the main problems that I had was that once the main protagonist, Corwin, uh, actually gets his memory back, uh, sorry, spoiler, and he starts sort of trying to lay claim to the throne of Amber, which is basically like the, uh, the, the, the narrative arc of the book. You know, like everything just gets really rushed, like really rushed. Uh, and Zelazny doesn't actually spend any time exploring all of these these really interesting concepts that he introduces you know it's a really short book it's like 170 some pages and really i mean it it would have really benefited from from being a lot longer and just going into these concepts much deeper than zelazny allows himself time for you know the second half of the book moves at such a ridiculously fast pace that as a reader you don't have any time to process all of these concepts that are being introduced and as a writer he doesn't give himself any time to delve into this you know massive world that he's creating you know in particular the the action scenes are i thought were very poor zelazny he often just he'll just give himself like one or two sentences to describe these like momentous sort of earth-shaking battles or or like huge momentous events so you really don't get a sense of the the emotion that's involved and and just the like huge impact that these events are supposed to be having also like once uh the main protagonist corwin gets his memory back he loses that whole sense of mystery that his his character had and i found that i didn't really have any connection with him after the first third of the book and that is in a first person narrative that is a, a huge problem i think because that's that's the main advantage of writing in the first person is that you feel a huge connection with the main character because you're, you're inside their head. You're getting all their thoughts and feelings about what's going on in the book. And yeah, like I say, after he gets his memory back, he loses that aura of mystery and you lose that sense of connection with him, in my opinion. So yeah, I mean, overall, this wasn't my uh, favorite read. Strong start, but a weak ending a very weak ending i think i mean i guess there's there's like plenty of potential in this series um you know in the later books if he explores some of the concepts that have been introduced in this first book but honestly this one didn't draw me in enough with his exploration of these ideas for me to be that bothered about picking up the rest of the series so yeah, I mean, it's got its plus points, definitely, but I'm not going to carry on with it anytime soon. So anyway, yeah, Nine Princes of Amber by Roger Zelazny, classic fantasy, make what you will.